Who's going to be the baddest dude when you come on these white lines? Be the baddest dude on these white lines starting tonight. No excuses! Welcome to episode 10 of the Brad Beer Show, sponsored by James Restaurant. I'm Cooper Burrell, and as always, I'm here with Coach Beer. Coach Beer, how you doing? Well, doing pretty good. Ready to get back to work and uh, see if we can't get in the old W column. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Coach, last week we had a very tough loss against um, Dutch Town. Lost 38 to 7. Denim moves to 3 and 6. What are we going to do this week to uh, get a win? Yeah, I mean, look, we got to continue to to do what we do and, and get comfortable doing what we're asking you to do, so we can go out and play mistake free. Uh, we got to start fast. We got to start with a little energy. Uh, you know, hats off to Dutch Town. They uh, they took the fight to us, and we didn't match it up. And uh, you know, that's what good football's team, uh, good football teams do. You know, we've been there. We understand that. And uh, you know, now we're uh, we're back to, to figuring out who we are and who, where we want to go with this. And uh, you know, our you guys keep coming back to work every day. Yeah, you know, you started the week off strong. Now we just got to continue to harp on who we're going to be and, uh, you know, take the fight to Walker on Friday night and, uh, you know, play our game. Let's get into these highlights. Jackets take the field at Dust Dutchtown, American flag in front. They're in the white and gray. Coach, what was the choice on this? It's a little different look, you know, just trying to change it up, give us a little spice, get us going. First possession is a punt. Trent goes to punt and is blocked by Dutchtown. Dutchtown recovers the ball in the red zone. Coach, yeah, let's talk about kind those. of the woes we started the games with. I mean, uh, you know, it's like I was telling you yesterday. The, the one beautiful thing about punt protection is it's a man protection. So if your man blocked it, we know who it was. Uh, you got to do your job. You got to get your head on that man. You got to run him out, and you got to cover. It's a tough deal. Dutchtown's ball number four, Gary Dukes. Runs, uh, runs the ball to the side and is finally brought down inside the 10. Number four, Dukes, the running back, gets the ball and runs it in to score, putting Dutchtown up 7-0. Coach, let's talk about this play right here. Well, I mean, look, uh, you know, defense put in a bad spot again. You, you know, you could tell by the way they left the sideline. It was kind of a mentality of, well, here we go again. And uh, Dutchtown was able to finish the drive and put us in a bad spot. But you got a lot of football to play at that time, so you can't get down. Uh, you got to go harder, and you, you got to get the offense up and the special teams up, and uh, you know get them to make plays. Denham's ball. Jerry hands it off to number 31, Brennan Paul, who's taken down. Turnover. Jack, Jackets forced the punt. Dutchtown with the ball. A direct snap to number four, Duke, who runs for the first down. Griffin's. It is a reverse handoff. Number one takes it up the sideline. Running, dodging around, and finally being brought down by number one, Rancher Miller. Griffins with the ball, bad snap, dropped by number 22, Carter. Uh, Hanbury, Jackets get the stop. A great stop by the defense. Dutchtown uh, goes for the field goal. It is good, 10-0 Griffins. Third down now, number nine, Jerry looks deep, throws. And it is incomplete by uh, the throw was to number six to Sean McBride. Dutchtown number 12, Ethan Akon. Uh, screen pass to number four, Dukes, who gets outside, finally being brought down by number seven. The ball is given to number six, uh, Harvey. A big tackle by number three, uh, Brian Hawkins. Love to see Brian make a good play. Quarterback number 12, O'Quinn. Gives the screen pass to number four, who runs it up and finally being hit big by new, number two, Jonas Clark. O'Quinn gets the snap again, looks to throw, and gives it to his wide receiver, number three, who is finally brought down by number uh, six to Sean McBride. Dutchtown with the ball again. They try to hand off, but he is tackled and brought down. Uh, hand off to number six. Harvey, who runs it up the middle, touchdown 17-0, Dutchtown. 
Coach, let's talk about this play right here. Uh, I mean, again, you, you get into a uh, power match with a power football team. They get side, they get inside the ten. Uh, you know, one thing they've done all year is finish drives, and uh, it was no different uh, Friday night in Dutchtown. Yes, sir. Another tough drive for the defense, letting uh, Dutchtown score. Number nine, Jerry Horn looks to pass, finally gets it off while being hit, and it falls incomplete after it hit Deshaun's hand. See him right there asking for the flag, but no flag was thrown. Um, forced to punt again, a run by number four, Dukes, who was hit by number two, Jonas Clark. Number 12, a coin, a Kern, pass complete to number two, Tyler Adams for a big game. Griffin's now rolling. A sweep to number two, Adams, who runs it up the sidelines, finally making his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Griffin, 24-0. Coach, let's talk about this play right here. All right, you know, you're in a tough spot, man. They get the edge. Uh, you know, we have a weak edge right there. They get numbers, and the uh, kid does a good job finishing the drive. Uh, you know, we got to be strong at the point of attack. And uh, like I said, that, that formation can give you fits and create gaps, and they did just that. Dutchtown is up big right now, 24-0 on Denham. Hate to see it. Third quarter, the moon is out at halftime. Third quarter, Dutchtown starts with the ball. Number 12 is, gives a screen pass to number two, Adams, who runs for a big gain and is finally brought down. Number 12 with the ball again, looking to pass, and is finally brought down by number 99, Shaq Butler. A great play by number 99 right there. Fourth down, number 12 looks to pass, and it is incomplete turnover on downs. Great coverage by number seven, Mason Varese right there. Those are plays he makes all the time. Number nine, Horn looks to pass, finally step, getting pressured and stepping out of the pocket to run, finally being brought down, short of the first down. Touchdown, hands off to number six, who runs it up the middle, and finally is brought down by a group of jackets. Number 12 looking to pass again, gives it to number two, who move, makes his way down the field. It's a foot race and he's finally brought down. Uh, he runs it deep into Denham's territory. The quarterback hands it off to number six, who runs it up the middle. Denham tries to stop him, but he gets in for the touchdown, putting Dutchtown up 31-0. Another tough drive for the defense, letting them score again. J Jerry Horn passes to number 15, Dijon, Dijon Goldman, for the first down. Jerry passes again to number 11, Peyton Puffer. Fourth quarter now, uh, fourth down, number nine, Horn looking to pass. It's a screen pass and it fails, falls incomplete. Griffin's ball, number six, gets it again, runs for a Big game and is finally uh, pushed out of bounds. Number four runs around the outside and finally scores from the short yardage. Touchdown Griffins, 38-0. This town scoring again here, putting them up way more. Number nine, Jerry Horn looks to pass to number five, Hudson Byers, who breaks a tackle and finally getting pushed out of bounds. Uh, number nine, Horn looking deep to pass. It is caught by number 11, Peyton Puffer, who is finally brought down by number one on Dutchtown. Jacket's biggest play of the night. Number uh, nine, Jerry Horn looks for the pass, and it is a touchdown to number 15, Dijon Goldman. Then I'm on the board late. Coach, let's talk about this play right here. Yeah, I mean, it was a great play, great catch, great finish. Uh, you know we got to do this. We got to do this early on, though. We got to come out. We got to come out and do this. We got to. We got to run our offense and, and score points early on. We can't wait till we're down, where there's no pressure to get going offensively. Yeah, it was a great last drive to give us the points. Dutchtown kneels out the clock. Final score: 38 to 7. Griffins win. Jackets fall to three and six. Coach, I want to talk about the offense we just saw there. Offense didn't put up more than seven points and. It was late in the game once they finally did. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I mean, it's no secret. You, you know, we've struggled offensively all year. You know, guys got to make plays. Got to guys got to do their job. 
Uh, we got to be more consistent across the board from me to coaches to kids. And uh, the only way you make it right is uh, you keep grinding and, uh, you know, just kind of find your identity so we can take off. And, you know, it's just a little too late. Uh, you know, it was good to see us put together a drive, but, you know, anybody can play offense when there's no pressure. I mean, we got to come out swinging. We got to start fast. And, um, you know, something we've struggled doing. You know, we, we come out, we take the ball trying to get some excitement, go three and out, get a, uh, get a punt blocked, and uh, we've put ourselves in some bad spots. You, you know, and those are the things that, uh, that we got to learn from and we got to grow from uh, because, it, you know, if it continues, it's going to be uh, – you know, it'd be a long, another long night for us, and uh, we we got to do our job. And and we've shown glimpses of being pretty good when we decide to do it. But uh, every one of us got to look in the mirror, and uh, you make the decision to to do the job and get it done, uh, because none of us have been good right now offensively. Coach, I want to go back to the beginning of the game. Uh, we started off second game in a row where we've got a punt blocked. Yep. Uh, you know, again, uh, the the one thing that makes it easy when uh, fixing punt protection is uh, it's a man protection. If your man blocks the punt, well, you, you gave up the block punt. And, uh, you know, it's a job. It's a nasty job. It's a special job, which is why it's called special teams. And, uh, you know, protection of a punt is the most critical. you got to get the snap. Uh, you got to get the protection. And then you got to get the coverage. There's a lot of moving parts to a punt team that is so critical in the game of football when you can flip the field and everything else. Um, or you can become the most dev devastating play in football when they do what they did and block it or you know, have a bad snap into the end zone, things like that, that we've got to clean up, and, uh, and we will. Uh, you know, again, it goes back to inexperience and guys doing a job that, that uh, have had limited opportunities that now have to do it and, uh, and get it right and, and learn from it so uh, we can get better. Coach, I want to talk about McBride and Hawkins. Both yeah. of them got hurt during the game. Just give yeah, us some I mean, info on uh, that. Look, uh, Hawkins was a scary situation. Uh, actually could have been really, really bad. Even though it looked really scary, it ended up not being that bad, but it could have been really, really bad. Luckily, we had a glance and blow from another teammate coming in to make a play that, uh, that almost saved him from it being what could have been really bad. Uh, you know, McBride has uh, got a foot problem and uh, is not looking good for this week. And, you know, Hawkins is out. But, you know, we have a, we have a man down, man up mentality. Uh, if you put all this time and, and effort into uh, preparing for your opportunity, well, you're going to see some new guys with an opportunity. And uh, they're going to have a chance to play. And uh, what, a, what a great game to play on Friday night in a rivalry game and Walker and, and show your skill set. Yes, sir. Get some experience. That's it. Coach, we had a lot of offensive changes starting quarterback, running back, and some wide receivers that changed in. I just want to talk about what changes the offense made. Yeah, you know, offensively we had some things, some issues, uh, you know, with some receivers and everything. So we had some, uh, some movement there with, with personnel and giving some guys a chance to step up. You know, quarterbacks. Uh, they're, they're always under the toughest microscope, and, and like I said, I think we got two pretty good ones. But the 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 stat that doesn't lie that you have to address is you know, the points they're scoring. You know, they're heading up an offense that isn't scoring points. So you know, we're just trying to figure out who's going to give us that spark, who's going to give us that hot hand, and who's going to lead our offense because that is the one thing that doesn't lie. You know, they both throw pretty balls. They both have a great job uh, commanding the, the huddle in the pocket. The uh, the problem is we're not finishing drives, and uh, we're looking for those dudes to step up there. You know, running backs, you know, we have a stable. We, we got a lot of running backs that are all really good running backs between uh, RJ and Byers, and, and now you got to see a little glimpse of Brenton Paul, who we think is the future uh, running back here. That's going to be a big-time player for us. And, uh, you know, what better way to get some guys a little taste, you know. To, they've worked all year. They've been given the opportunity. They're ready. You know, sometimes we get caught, you know, in athletics where everybody's got to play. Well, that's not the case. Uh, guys that play are ones that are you know, not only worthy of the opportunity, but are ready for the opportunity. And Brenton Paul is that guy. Coach, I want to move on from Dutchtown and now look at Walker. The big rivalry game coming up against him. What are going to be the keys to winning? Walker? Yeah, you know, we get to go on the road again uh, where we've had one decent showing, not a win, of course, and then one bad showing, which was not a win, of course. So, I mean, we gotta, we got we to gotta bring that, that level of consistency, it's consistency to the road. Um, we got to go over to a Livingston Parish rivalry game, which we know anything can happen. Walker is a, uh, a much improved football team. Chad Mahaffey's always been one of my favorites to, uh, to go against, to deal with. And, you know, he and I are good friends, and uh, I got all the respect in the world for the job he does. And, uh, you know, he's one that has just kept plugging and plugging and plugging. And now those guys are doing, you know, what we had an opportunity to do and, and flourish with a, uh, with a team that, that had bought into him and worked with him all these years. And they've given him a chance to be successful. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, outside of this week, I pull for Walker and I pull for the Livingston Parish schools. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what they're doing. I'm excited to see that they're going to be competitive and, and play a great game of football. And, you know, we got to do the same. We got to play our game. 
you know, uh, one thing that I don't worry about week in and week out is who we're playing because uh, Denham Springs has had some struggles and some growth issues that we got to continue to get through. So when we when we get into the offseason, we'll be ready to go. We'll be able to learn from this, good or bad, and be able to grow and, and, and get back to our winning ways. Thank you for watching this episode of the Brett Beer Show, sponsored by James Restaurant. As always, I'm Cooper Burrell. Uh, Coach Beer, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. The Jackets play at Walker at 7 this Friday. And once again, thank you for watching this episode of the Brett Beer Show.